Hi guys, my name is Queenie and today I want to talk about Overwatch 2 and whether or not you should be excited for it. The short answer is yes, I totally think you should be excited for Overwatch 2, but let me explain why. To start off, quality of life improvements. Oh my goodness, there's going to be so many quality of life improvements. The biggest one and most important one in my opinion, and one that I'm frankly shocked they never brought into Overwatch 1, is the ping system. Oh my god, the ping system is phenomenal. It is really, really good. And having played the beta and then going back to Overwatch 1, I find myself hitting that ping button and getting so frustrated it doesn't exist. You can literally ping flankers, ping when you need help, ping who killed you, ping to tell people to fall back, ping for literally everything. There is never a bad reason to ping unless you're spamming and being annoying to your team. Stop that. You know who you are. Like, the ping system is truly the number one system I miss the most whenever I play Overwatch 1. The simple fact that you can't ping flankers feels like such a disadvantage now after having used it that I'm like mind blown that they never implemented it into Overwatch 1. I mean, sure, yeah, you can say that, well, you can just call it out, you can just do this, do that, the other thing. Sure, but nothing is as quick as just a simple ping because it shows which hero it is if you have vision on them it shows exactly the location where you last saw them there is so much information in that one button press that is so much quicker to convey than over voice comms now don't get me wrong obviously voice comms are still going to important because it's still a highly tactical and strategical game so having good in-game leaders and shot calling and all that stuff is still going to be very important but information-wise, the ping system is phenomenal. An added bonus of the ping system, I know we're talking a lot about the ping system, but an added bonus of the ping system is that it will make the game more accessible. If you're somebody who might not be able to use a headset for whatever reason, maybe you have trouble hearing, maybe you can't vocalize, maybe you can't, for whatever reason, maybe you just simply don't feel comfortable using a headset and voice comms and all the other things. You can still provide so much information and receive so much information simply visually with the help of ping. I think it's a terrific step, not only in terms of communication and efficiency in communication and quality of life in general, but also accessibility, which is so, so important. That's enough about the ping, I promise. But I just, just, I don't know if you can tell, but I love the pieces. <laughs> But I'm gonna stop ranting about the pings, okay? We got more things to get through today. The second thing that I'm really excited about that they're implementing that is a definite quality of life improvement is the scoreboard. Yes, yes, I hear some of you, but Queenie, won't they be super toxic because they're just gonna use the scoreboard to shit on you? Yes, they will do that. But also think to all the times people are shitting on each other for gold medals, hmm? People talking so much trash and basing it around gold medals, okay? Gold medals, as we all know, was never a very accurate way to gauge your performance as a player. Your contribution to the team wasn't the most accurate. In my opinion, it will definitely combat the I'm the only one doing anything on person. On, you know who I'm talking, you know who that is. You can now exactly see their kills, assists, deaths, uh, damage done. You can see everything. It's all laid out. You can't bullshit anymore because we see you now. Maybe I'm just super optimistic, which is totally fair. I'm a pretty optimistic person, but I feel like overall a scoreboard will actually lead to slightly less toxicity in comparison to the gold medal system where everybody is bragging about gold kills, gold damage, blah de blah de blah, and none of that matters. You know, I had a guy the other day brag about gold kills. Do you wanna know what, do you know what gold kills was? Three. He bragged about getting three kills. Clearly the team had bigger issues than that if gold kills were three, but it doesn't matter. He used that gold medal as a tool to be toxic to his teammates. Say, we didn't do anything because he had gold medals in kills, which again, I remind you, it was three kills. Yeah, gold medals isn't bad. I'm glad to see it go. <laughs> Overall scoreboard, exciting, 
can't wait for it. It's gonna be good. <laughs> We have some other improvements as well, mainly sound improvements. Now, this is a bit of a split opinion for people or a split topic. How do you say this? It's a bit of a split. I'm firmly in the camp. I really like the sound redesign that they've done for Overwatch 2. I think it's clearer, it's punchier, feels more impactful, and it's more directional. It makes it easier to hear where things are coming from, which is always a great idea in a competitive FPS. So for those reasons, I think the sound redesign is awesome. Now, some people are still going to miss like the legacy sounds and they prefer the old Overwatch 1 sounds. But honestly, the variety of sounds I think is so underrated. Like there's different sounds to the bullet depending on what type of area you're in. If you're in a room, there's different echo and reverb and like it's it's so in depth and it's I think it's really cool. I know it's like a tiny detail that a lot of people don't particularly pay attention to, but I think the sound redesign for Overwatch 2 is really, really good, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I think you should be too. And in the case of competitive FPSs, bad sound design can absolutely ruin your game and give you a tactical disadvantage. <coughs> Apex. There's also a bunch of gameplay changes, right? We all know about the gameplay changes, most notably 5v5. Some opinions online are very much of the idea that 5v5 is gonna be detrimental to the game. I firmly believe the opposite. I think 5v5 is gonna be so, so healthy for the game. The pace is better. There is less tanks. There is like one less tank makes such a difference. Having less shields on the uh, on the field means that Senyata is incredibly powerful. It means that Anna is incredibly powerful with her anti nade. You know, Discord orbs, anti nades, all that sort of stuff. It's so much more about positioning and decision making. And you as an individual player have much more impact. And DPS can pop off easier. Support are actually supports and not so much geared towards healing only, don't get me wrong, healing is still a very important part of your role and your job responsibility if you play support, but supports feel more truly like supports. As a support main, obviously this is the role that I'm most invested in, and while it still has some kinks to be worked out and, you know, some polishing to be made, uh, the fact that they made tank, which was the most unpopular role of Overwatch, the most popular role of Overwatch, in the beta anyways, really shows that they do know how to turn a role around to make it fun, make it engaging, make it just a great time to play. That gives me hope for support. Again, maybe I'm overly optimistic, but as long as we get more support characters, like there's one thing, right? Okay, so let's get into that a little bit. So the thing about support that people complained about was, you know, that they felt quite weak, felt less impactful and all this stuff. And that, uh, to, some, to some extent I do agree, but support is also more powerful than ever in 5v5 because of the 5v5 changes and because of the pace change and everything. The main thing that I find is that in the beta, they seem to be changing the supports in order to try and make the existing supports cover more bases like i completely understand wanting to rework moira a bit to where she has a little bit more utility for the team i think that's wonderful i think giving Moira utility is great but i think the biggest problem with support in general is just that there isn't enough support characters why try to make our current support roster do everything and fill every gap instead of giving us more options of support roles, right? Like, more options of different heroes that will fit more situations. I think, honestly, the biggest thing that's gonna help support is simply more support heroes. I mean, at least get us up to the same amount as tanks before we start getting more DPS and tanks, please. And since the general consensus on, like, Reddit and stuff initially was very much a support bad, I want to counter that with support is support now. And supports in Overwatch 2. If you look at, okay, let's just roll it back. Look at Overwatch 1. Look at what the top ranked supports are doing, okay? If we look at that, look at ML7, for example. I think he is one of the biggest proposers of the whole support is support, 
not healer, okay? It means you should be doing damage and help your team aggressively when you have the opportunity to do so as well. And in fact, if you do look at the highest ranked support players in the world, they are using that very mentality. You know, if nobody needs healing, use your abilities and your skills aggressively, right? And I think in Overwatch 2, this becomes even more apparent. You know, like, doing damage in Overwatch 2 has so much impact now because again there's one less person on the team and you have more freedom to do so because you don't have two massive targets needing almost constant babysitting and healing not to mention that you don't need to babysit the other support as much either because of the new support passive that's being implemented where supports heal themselves after a bit of downtime you know if they don't take damage within what is it a, a second something like this they start regenerating health, which is fantastic. I miss that so much in Overwatch 1 because it means that you as a support don't need to keep an eye in your in the back of your head at the same time to keep an eye on your second support, right? It just gives you so much more freedom. I think for players, this 5v5 change is going to be really exciting. One thing that I saw people complain about is that it feels much more deathmatchy than 6v6. And I just want to counter that with... Yes, I understand why it feels that way, but do you remember when you first started playing Overwatch 1? How chaotic and deathmatchy that felt when we first started? Because we didn't know the maps, we didn't know the characters, we didn't have a feel for the pace of the game yet. It's the exact same thing going to 5v5, especially with the new maps, especially with all the hero reworks and new heroes coming out all at once. The game is changing fundamentally. So yeah, until you get used to the new pace, until you get used to the new flow, until you get used to the new characters, until you get used to the existing characters reworks, until you get used to all the new maps, yeah, it's gonna feel chaotic. That's kind of part of it, and that's kind of what makes me exciting because that's kind of what makes it feel like a new game again. It gives you the opportunity to rediscover the game that you loved for years, but now it's fresh, and you you have so many new things to learn. And to me, that's an exciting part. Not everybody likes that. Some people like, hey, I took the time to learn Overwatch one time. Don't want to do it again. And fair enough. If that's your point of view, fair enough. Some people just don't like change. But me personally, I love that. <laughs> I'm so excited to try all the new things, see all the new combos. Admittedly, I do not watch a lot of Overwatch League because, frankly, I just get frustrated that I can't play that version of the game yet. So, yeah, I know that Jotes, the Junker Queen Goats, is extremely popular right now and whatever. But for like the casual fan base, I'm so excited for us because we're gonna have so much to explore and so much to learn and so many combos to discover and rediscover and ah, oh, I'm so excited for it. <laughs> I've talked a lot about support, I've talked a lot about just like the 5v5 change in general, but let's talk a little bit about the DPS and tanks as well. Now these aren't my main roles, but I do have experience playing them a bunch and I mean tanks so much more fun than Overwatch 1. If you're a tank main, and I just, I don't want to speak for you, obviously, make up your own mind, yada yada, but honestly, I think you're gonna have a great time. The new tanks are tanky, dude, and they pack a punch. <laughs> it is scary getting into close quarters with tanks now. It is, yeah, they, they take up a lot of space, they demand a lot of respect, and they pack a hell of a punch. So if you're a tank player, I think you're gonna have a whale of a time in Overwatch 2. As a DPS player in Overwatch 2, you're gonna have a freaking ball, okay? There's less tanks, which means less shields to block all your shots, meaning more picks for you, honey. Yes, that's right. You're gonna be able to pick left, right, and center, and picks are more valuable because, again, one less player on the team. It's just a much more fun pace of the game. And I honestly think that all roles are more exciting, more impactful, more valuable in the game. I know not everybody is as excited for Overwatch 2 as I am. So please, let me know your opinions about Overwatch 2. Are you excited about it? Are you not excited about it? What are you excited for? What are you not looking forward to? I'm so curious to hear your opinions. Um, this video is getting pretty long right now, so I think I'm just going to call it here. 
Let me know your thoughts, guys. Um, we can deep dive on so many more topics. I could talk forever about this stuff. So let me know if you enjoyed the video. And uh, thank you so much, everybody. I've been Queenie. You've been great. Thank you for watching my video. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye. You know what the best part about Overwatch 2 is? It's less than a month away. I'm so excited for it.